John Schultz, and I'm with Compass Technology Group, and today we're going to talk about a focus beam system. The focus beam is a method we use to measure the free space properties of materials, whether they're dielectric or magnetic. A uh, focus beam system starts with a horn antenna, which you see here. This is a wideband 4 to 40 gigahertz horn, and it's talking to a frequency extender that's then connected to a VNA. Uh, this system uh, can also be changed out for different frequencies, so we have a different uh, either higher frequency or lower frequency horn, we can have different modules, or we can talk straight to the VNA with this. The energy coming from the horn illuminates a lens. In this case, we have a dielectric lens made from Rexolite. And the lens focuses the energy from the horn onto the sample position here in the middle. In the middle, we have a flat face front, and we have a confined beam so that we don't illuminate the edges of the specimen and don't have edge diffraction problems. Continuing down, you can see we have another lens and another horn antenna. So we can measure transmission coefficient of our materials or reflection coefficient. So today we're going to go ahead and measure a material sample. This material sample is a magnetic absorber, so it has both a magnetic permeability as well as a dielectric permittivity. Before I mount it, let me first talk about calibration. When we calibrated, uh, we first measured no sample at all, which is what you see here. It's air, and so it has 100% transmission and no reflection. We then also placed a metal plate in here, which has 100% reflection and no transmission. Okay, so I will now mount the sample on our, on our turntable. This is a turntable, so if we wanted to, we can measure both at normal instance as well as a function of angle. We can even add an extra arm to our focus beam system so that we can do bistatic measurements. Now that our sample is loaded, we can go ahead to CTG Calc and do some processing. First, I've already measured a clear site and I've already measured a metal, so all I have to do now is measure the sample. So I click measure. It scans the, the network analyzer and the modules, so they scan through frequencies of 18 gigahertz at the low end up to 40 gigahertz at the high end. 40 gigahertz is limited by our horns. Uh, and so you can see here in the plot, we now have transmission and reflection. These S parameters, S22 and S11, are the two reflection coefficients. And then down here, you can see S21 and S12. There's two plots here. Those are our transmission coefficients. These are the amplitude. We've also collected phase. And with that, we can then do some additional processing to calculate our permittivity and permeability, or F sub mu. So we've put in the thickness of our cow plate. We put in the thickness of our specimen. We've given some initial guess values for the, for the uh, algorithm to, to search over. And then we just click the button, and we let it do, it, do its thing. So essentially, we're using an elder mead method to iteratively go through frequency by frequency to solve for epsilon and mu, real or imaginary, as a function of frequency. And we do this uh, by taking the amplitude and phase of the reflection and transmission coefficient data and basically doing some math and physics on it. And now you see a result. The dielectric permittivity is what we're currently looking at. There's a real part, which is the solid red line. And then this sort of dashed line down here at the bottom, that's the imaginary part. So that's showing us that the dielectric properties has a dielectric constant of about 14-ish, and it's fairly low loss, very low imaginary part. I can also go to our mu tab, which shows us our magnetic properties, and you can see that the real part here, we're at the high end of the relaxation, where the mu is dropping down, actually goes below 1, and then it'll eventually settle back up to 1 as we go to high frequency. And you can see where our mu is changing. We also have an imaginary part, this dashed line, which shows us our magnetic loss. And that's why this material acts as a magnetic absorber. Now that I've showed you the fundamentals of focus beam measurements, in particular uh, focus beam measurements at lower frequencies, the system goes down to 2 gigahertz, we're going to take a look at a higher frequency version of this guy. So while the larger focus beam system we just saw does very well at low frequencies, the large size makes it difficult to align at high frequencies where wavelength is small. And so for that reason, we have this guy which, with smaller lenses and mounts for the horns. So like our other system, this has a sample holder with horns and lenses on both sides, and the sample holder can also be rotated. Um, as you can see, this also has some additional features, not on the other system. We have a micrometer stage here that allows us to do both fine rotation and linear uh, transformation of the horn. And the reason for that is because it's difficult to align at very high frequencies. And so with these different uh, Translation stages, we can align these so they're in a nice straight line. Another nice feature of this system is it's very modular. You can see here we've got uh, modules that operate from 50 to 75 gigahertz and, and corresponding horns. 
Uh, you can also substitute out other higher frequency modules, 60 to 90 is what we have up here. You can also do W band, 75 to 110, or other frequency ranges as, as well. Uh, you can also go a little bit low, go down to maybe 20 gigahertz with horns like this and, and additional horn mounts. And that allows this system to have a very full range of frequencies. So that was an overview of our focus beam systems and, and techniques here. Next time, we're going to check out some other cool instruments.